Hi, Bohan Pitches. Today I'm going to talk to you about white privilege, which I'm actually going to be shitting on, and right now I'm actually shitting in, because we're staying in a villa owned by a white person, um, which you get all across the coast of Sri Lanka, whereas white people who are actually working like, you know, fairly ordinary jobs or whatever will save up enough to buy a villa here, which they then get Sri Lankan people to maintain and do all the cooking and stuff, and they rent it out on Airbnb. So I'm just renting white privilege for the weekend, but some people live here. So what got me really thinking about white privilege is this book, Traveling Wild Black, by Nanjala Nyaibola. Uh, she's a Kenyan who's traveled to, I think, around 80 countries, speaks like 10 languages. And this, for me, is the only travel book that no longer makes me straight up nauseous, because she talks about the reality of travel as it is lived for most of the world, which is, you know, being fucking humiliated in visa lines, being feeling unsafe at like border controls, all of this shit. Uh, this is the travel book for the fucking 99%. So one thing she said that really stuck with me is she's talking about her experience in Haiti. So she came through America. So she has all the sort of, she has all the benefits of white privilege without being white. So she can see it. And she's talking about her experience with, she was studying Creole and her experience with a Haitian teacher who was really quite an excellent teacher, but his boss was a white American woman who would talk down to him. And she said, I hate it because I sense that my empowerment as a foreign woman is expected to come at the cost of this man's dignity. He cannot stand at full metaphorical height. He must slouch a little forward in order to make everyone else just a little more comfortable. Privilege like this always comes at somebody else's expense. And that really got me thinking about it because you know, when we see white privilege, we think, oh, okay, but like, so what? Like it's a little extra. Like, oh, so like a white person writes like a offensive cookbook about your food or a white person owns this villa, but like, why not? Like, shouldn't we be able to share? Like, isn't that okay? So this really made me think about it. And fuck no. Yes, a white person should be able to come here and own this villa, but a brown person should be able to go to England and fucking own a house there, or work there and save up enough money to buy a house there. So what's happening isn't sharing. And I think this is contained in the very definition of privilege. If everybody else is, if everybody's able to do something, it's not a fucking privilege, is it? White privilege only exists at the expense of everyone else, at the expense of the world. And this has made me look around the world that I live in today and see like, hey, like we haven't gotten very fucking far from colonialism, have we? Like you guys don't, even have to be here anymore to occupy us. We'll patrol our own borders. You guys can keep all the nice villas, get all the resources you want, and you can do it from abroad. It's like colonialism as a service. It's like colonialism in the cloud. You guys have just outsourced it and removed yourself and kept all the benefits and then made us feel like we're fucking bad and like we need to beg and plead at visa lines to say, oh please, can you like let us into the world? Whereas you motherfuckers are tromping around here leaving avocado toast and God knows what everywhere. So I won't actually discuss this in abstract. I'll, I'll talk about some real issues. So here's a photograph. This is literally a photograph of white privilege. So this is a white girl in a Sri Lankan market. And she's like, oh, look, I can like buy things. I can make recipes. I can learn about this cool culture. But this is a picture of passport apartheid. This is a white girl who can come to our side of the apartheid line, learn about our culture marginally, take it back, sell it, whereas everyone else in that photo cannot fucking move. We're just like the animals in the zoo. And you can come and like take our picture and learn about us and fucking write about us and we have no say in that. But I'm telling you, we're not animals, we're humans and we have the same God-given right to move as anyone. As in the other brown women in this photo have the same rights as the white women. And it's only denied by violence. And I'm, I'm saying you can't deny it. These are our God-given rights. So this is this girl, Emily Dobbs, who's got her own fucking reputation on like Sri Lankan Twitter because she's put these like singular translations in here which are just run through Google Translate and they like make no fucking sense. She has a recipe in here which is, she has a recipe for gotokola, which is a vegetable, which she's then gonna make out of parsley. So it's like, you're, it's like having a recipe for potato made out of like peas. I mean, then she goes into it's like a salad. And the thing is, some of these recipes are, aren't even that bad. Like, they seem like interesting recipes. Just the things dripping with fucking structural racism. Here's another picture of her on Instagram talking about like, oh, I've been here for five months, I feel tribal. Like, tribes is how the British fucking divided us. Like, in Kenya or wherever, like, Sri Lanka doesn't have fucking tribes. Like, we didn't call ourselves tribes. That's just how you used to define us, because white people are allowed to have nations and states, and we have to be backwards-ass tribes. And that shit is dripping through this. And then there's also this idea that, like, say, hoppers, which is a common Sri Lankan 
Washington food, which is hard to make. This is the idea that like, oh, like I make the best toppers and like all of my servants tell me so. And then she gets to go back to England and sell these things at a market. And then she gets to write a fucking cookbook through the white publishing industry with blurbs by like other fucking white people. All the thank yous in this are like white people except for one Tamil name I saw. And it's just this like mountain of white privilege. It's a fucking book and it's they beat us over the fucking head with this. Because this is the world we live in. It's where our own food doesn't exist unless a white person discovers it. There was something else on CNN where they're talking about, oh, how this like, white woman discovered whales in Kenya. And how did she discover them? Well, the local fisherman told her. It's like we're still in the fucking Christopher Columbus era, where like, it just takes a white motherfucker stomping on something and exploiting it for it to exist. And this is wrong. Not in the sense that this is like a fucking racist recipe book. It's in the sense that we can't do the same. As in, when you talk about this issue, people say, oh, but it's just writing. You can write about whatever you want. You can write whatever characters you want. You can convert other recipes. You can share culture. And I say 100% absolutely, we can too. And if you can't do that, then you're just living under apartheid, and that's not fucking cool. These are all the recipes that we have in this fucking colonial villa. So this is Bill's Everyday Asian. Why the fuck do I need a Asian from Bill? What the fuck is this guy? Bill Granger. This guy talks about how he like went to a Chinese restaurant when he was younger and then like on his gap year he went to Indonesia and Thailand and that's influenced him to write this motherfucking cookbook of like him sitting on a boat being like a privileged white fucking douchebag. And you know what, these recipes may be good, but he talks about, you know, he's in I think Indonesia and he sees this toothless woman cooking things at a stall. And you know, why the fuck doesn't that toothless woman write a cookbook? because she doesn't have the opportunity. Because Bill here just crosses the apartheid line, blithely goes wherever he wants in the world, or picks up some culture here, picks up some culture there, goes back and sells it. And the fact is that we cannot. White people are allowed to be travel bloggers. White people are allowed to be digital nomads. And this is all enforced by violence. Try and be a fucking digital nomad from like Lagos or Sri Lanka. This is, the, uh, this is the passport form you need to, this is a visa form you need to fill out to, as a Sri Lankan to go to Italy. It's like a colonoscopy, all your money, we have to prove that like we're rich. It's just ritual humiliation and it's holding us down. And meanwhile, you guys come here and like you can write books, you can, you can monetize our culture, you can sell our culture, you can do whatever you want. You can write about your fucking time in the slums. And this isn't just tourism, this goes across your development industry also. Even our suffering is yours. You, I was reading something in The Guardian where they were talking about some Vietnamese people who died, I think, in a shipping container coming to England. This is from some group called Humanity United, and they're not fucking united. These are just the writers of white propaganda because they never ask, like, hey, what would the people who died want? What they wanted is their God-given right to just move to England if they felt like it, as plenty of English people do, going to Vietnam and like setting up fucking shops or being tourists and then coming back and setting up a faux restaurant, writing a fucking cookbook about it. That's all those Vietnamese people wanted. And yet even this NGO says, oh, we need to have uh, more vocational training back on the colonial plantation. We need to raise awareness that these people aren't equal. And that's happening here in Sri Lanka. As I just drove down the road, the Australian government spends a bunch of money on billboards with like sad looking Sri Lankan faces in black and white saying like, if you come to Australia, we'll fucking drown you. And my question is, how the fuck did you get to Australia? You guys also came on a boat. Isn't fucking white people originally in Australia? And yet you just put up these borders and say that we're less than you and it's nothing but racism. And what makes the racism so goddamn galling is that you guys have the gall to come back here and say, oh, I want to set up a nice restaurant. And it's so hard to get local produce. And oh my God, the Sri Lankans, they're so difficult to work with. And it's like, fuck you, you're difficult to work with. We don't drown you if you come, want to come here. You guys are drowning us if we want to go there. And then you go back and give us half-assed version of our culture. And we have to beg and grovel to even go set up there. And, and we do, some of us do get over there. I mean, I'm a case in point, I'm a fucking comprador. Some of us do get to go over there. And then maybe we do monetize our culture, but then we have to hit like the white publishing industry where like just a random white girl can say, oh, I went on Sri Lanka vacation sometimes. Can I write a book? And be like, yeah, okay, we'll fucking run it in the Spectator, we'll run it in the Telegraph. Like, whereas if a brown person, let's say a toothless brown person who's damn good at making hoppers, what are her chances in the white publishing industry? And your publishing industry say, oh, people don't want to read this, people don't want to know this, but maybe you haven't tried her fucking hoppers. You guys don't even know. This is the cost of privilege. All of these authors, I'm not, I don't mean to be, no, I do mean to be shitting on these people. All these authors of these books and these NGOs and all the fucking fancy development aid people you send over to come cruise around in their Jeeps and live in giant houses. All these people may be well-intentioned, but they're part of a system of straight up structural racism. And the price of their privilege 
is our fucking rights. And so what I'm trying to tell you, because I'm not asking you, I'm trying to tell you that this is coming, that the era of passport apartheid will end, and that we will be free. And I'm also telling my people, even South Africa and many African countries have shitty visa schemes, as Naibola points out. But I'm telling you, the age of passport apartheid must end. All human beings are equal. We have a God-given right to walk across this earth. It's not just for white people to set up villas or to write stupid cookbooks. We all have the right to take photographs of our butts in front of everybody else's monuments, you know, religious sensibilities included. That's our, that's our God-given right. And I claim the same right for a brown child or a black child as for your random fucking white kids on gap year. We're done with white people discovering cultures and saving the world. To be quite honest, you guys have fucked up cultures and you're destroying the world. The world is ours. And I'm not asking you, I'm telling you. And for further reading, do 1,000% this book, Nanjala Nayabola. This is like the only travel book you should read. Whereas the white world gets eat, pray, love, we get beat, spay, hate. Literally, we get beaten, we get drowned, we get thrown into refugee camps that make a mockery of the International Convention on Refugees. We get our fucking uteruses removed at the American border. And we just get endless hate from all across the fucking world. Even the European Union, like I think Ursula Leyden, she made her migration commissioner, the title is you know, in charge of defending our European way of life, which is, I guess, yes, that is the European way of life, being total fucking cunts. Like, yeah, killing black and brown people, you know, in the thousands each year, I guess, I mean, you guys should maybe step it up a bit. You guys used to kill hundreds of thousands, but yeah, that's the European way of life. That's the American way of life. And to our great colonial shame, we've copied a lot of these colonial structures. And we need to put that shit down. So anyway, this book is a really eye-opening read. It's the only travel book I'd say that's worth reading because every travel book is just like apartheid diaries and it's, they're full of shit.